the mission really was to kind of challenge the overuse of the word innovation. It's a word you hear a lot, and it's a word clearly linked to the biotechnology industry because it is an industry that relies on innovation. But we really were motivated by let's, let's assess what regions are truly doing innovative things. Let's assess just how well these regions are, you know, are doing in terms of life science ingenuity policies that really are going to facilitate discovery. Well, one of the questions behind the question as well is why do countries even care about biotechnology? Why do they want to make these investments in biotechnology, which is it's an expensive industry to operate in, but the benefits are, are very, very large. Um, for one thing, there's biotechnology products tend to be high value products. So they can be sold internally, they can be sold externally, and so you can gain foreign currency. They can also, uh, they also, it also supports high paying jobs, and so you can increase the uh, quality of life in your own country. And perhaps most importantly, they can have an impact on society's health, on the environment. Uh, there was times when things were really good for most companies. And now uh, the large companies with a lot of money coming in are doing, doing well in a very, very enviable position. And the smaller companies are certainly um, finding new ways to, uh, to deal with the, uh, the challenges. Obviously, the US has really been the leader in this field. Has, you know, um, and there are several reasons for that. It wasn't preordained. But we wanted to you know, see if that was going to continue and, and what, are some, what are some of the things other countries are doing that may put them in positions to, in 10 years, 20 years, perhaps even surpass the US. We didn't know. And that was kind of one of the questions that guided us in, in our project. And I think Yali can speak to that as well. Yeah, we know that in, in health biotechnology, the United States is the world leader. But we took a look at the other categories. We took a look at agricultural biotechnology and we took a look at industrial biotechnology as well. And in industrial biotechnology, Denmark leads the world, followed by the Netherlands. And so the United States is very large and has the capacity to take that leadership over, but uh, it's yet to be seen if that'll happen. So in addition to taking a look at the current situation, we also did take a look at the things which do build a strong environment. And we saw that Israel, for example, is strongest in foundations. They have the highest business expenditures on research and development of any country in the world. Singapore leads the world in the strength of their educational workforce. And these are the sort of, sorts of things which countries can focus on to build the foundations, the uh, elements for a strong innovation, innovation-based industry like biotechnology. Well, I think the education in the United States is very, very strong, but people tend to forget that, uh, that the United States is a large, large country. And so the very strong states have phenomenal education systems that are on par with the best in the world. But when you take a look at the country as in an aggregate, there's a lot of, there's a lot of states that aren't, aren't quite up to par. And so the United States still does have a very, very strong educational system. There are some surprising data sets and some surprising stories. And we found some interesting ones. I think Denmark was one interesting surprise because it's a very small country, but it really does punch above its weight in terms of life science innovation. And part of that is historic because it was a country that produced beer and cheese. And those are products that actually rely on you know, microbiological processes. Fermentation. And so ferment fermentation, of course, which is kind of the first biotech innovation. You know obviously thousands of years old. And so Denmark kind of had an, an infrastructure used to kind of supporting that, that industry and uh, that actually translated very well into a kind of a biotech um, space. But what was surprising about Denmark too is they have the most biotech patents. As a proportion of their total patents. As a proportion of their total patents. And also, there's another statistic here that I'm missing. Well, they all produce the world in industrial enzyme production. Yeah, produce the world in industrial in enzymes. Terms, yeah. more than any other country. So that was a really unique story. Um, you just also, you know, what are some of the other ones that? You well, Argentina is the second, second largest producer of bio, biotech crops. Completely caught me by surprise. The reality is that there's always, there's always, it's an innovation-based industry. There's always exciting things coming online, and so it's, it's terribly exciting to watch. And one of the important things to consider is when are these technologies actually going to come come online? There's so many things waiting in the wings that uh, when they do hit, they're going to have a large impact, but not until they do hit. I really like diagnostics. It's one of the uh, key elements for personalized medicine. And uh, the systems still have to be worked out for how to, how to integrate diagnostics into the healthcare payer system. But the technologies keep on moving forward, and it'll be really exciting to see when they do hit, how they do get deployed.